Well guys, it's Josh from the Redneck Homestead channel and it has been entirely too long since I've done a video. And I feel badly. Sorry for kind of going dark on you guys for a little while. I've just been so ridiculously busy and um, you know, if I gotta be totally honest, I just haven't been too motivated to film a lot of the stuff I've been doing. It's like spring cleanup stuff. It's really not that exciting. Um, some of it's kind of exciting, but um, it's real task oriented, stuff that needs to get done. And it's been difficult for me to break away and film it. A lot, a lot of, you know, detail goes into uh, making these videos. I mean, I'm not by any means a producer, but, um, you know, you gotta be mindful of what, what's behind you, what's in front of you, what would make a, an interesting shot and what would be entirely boring. So long story short, that's why I've been kind of gone. It's more that I've just been really busy. And um, here we are at uh, the property, the commercial property that we're working on. And you can see behind me, um, the ambulance is over there. The link belt excavator is over there. And there's a bunch of stuff in the background there. Hmm, wonder what that could be. Got a couple generators there. I've got my Hyundai HCP 6500D, uh, I think it's D, whatever, commercial uh, generator that I use on job sites. I use it up at the off-grid property. And I also have a Hobart Power Weld, an old Kohler-powered um, gas-operated welder. And today's project, I'm going to be doing some maintenance on the link belt excavator in preparation to sell it. So let's take a walk over and see what we're up to. This on a prior video, when I bought this excavator, there were several problems with it. One of them was a turbo. The other one was um, some simple track adjuster stuff down, down in there on both sides, actually. It wouldn't hold uh, tension on the tracks. And one of the most important things was this bolt wasn't here. It was um, just a pin that was uh, what turned out to be a sheared off grade 5 bolt. So what I did was I went to Fastenal, and they're a national company, but in case you don't know what Fastenal is, it's a uh, company that basically sells absolutely every kind of fastener from staples to bolts to you name it. If you can think of it, they make it. So rather than um, replace this pin um, with the you know the factory prescribed solution which I neither have the equipment the expertise nor the time nor the money actually to deal with I figure let's just get a grade 8 bolt and um, stick it in there and weld it on now I've been managing to get by with this bolt in here and I'm not really crawling this machine too much at all so um, every I don't know hour or so or let's say every a uh, thousand feet that I crawl on this thing I get out I lift the tracks off the ground and I hammered in with a three or four pound hammer this guy right here so what I've done is um, I've lifted this uh, track off the ground I've bunked it with some logs which you should always always do never trust your hydraulics ever especially on a 28 year old machine like this um, that's weepy and you can see it's um, it's had its share of leaks and hose changes just don't trust your hydraulics if you do it could cost you your life so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna weld this on and I'll make the decision whether I'm going to um, cut it off with a torch afterwards or not here is my Hobart power weld um, 6500 generator welder and the things like literally 30 years old this year. I was looking through the manual and I don't know if this particular one's 30 years old, but the manual was copywritten in 1985. It's uh, extremely reliable. It has been dropped off a trailer, beaten up, banged up. Um, I just dented it just now, unloading it from the ambulance here <laughs> with the excavator. It's powered by a Kohler Magnum 16 horsepower engine which is relatively reliable. Unfortunately, it's gas. It's not my favorite, not my favorite fuel, but it is what it is. And I'm at a property that has no electricity. You should now be starting to see this whole thing come together a little bit. 
this ambulance is the service truck. And, you know, like I told you guys, I'm not in the equipment business. I'm not in the excavating business. Um, I'm just kind of, uh, this is my hobby. Some people like to play with computers for a hobby. Well, computers are my job. And other people um, do dirt work and excavation for a living. And, well, I do it for a hobby. So that's, uh, that's what we're doing here. So I, I can't justify purchasing an expensive service truck um, when I could make this awesome ambulance do for me. So, um, you know, it still needs to be tidied up and tightened up a little bit, but this is what we're working with and uh, let's get to it. I haven't had this thing running for a while. It's been in the back of the ambulance. Um, it should start up with a, with a choke on. So let's see what happens. We'll flip the ignition on. Wow, I am impressed. Look at that, wow. All right, welding is an electrical process and batteries involve electrical processes. So whenever you're welding equipment or you're welding on something that has electrical circuitry running through it, you always want to break the uh, electrical circuit. And so we're gonna just disconnect this battery here. See if I can do it with one hand while I'm filming. Just wanna break the circuit so that we don't energize the system with our welding apparatus because we would most certainly fry the entire system I'm confident of that and uh, so let's just do that and we don't even have a, a complete circuit to these batteries here all right today I'm gonna to be welding DC positive um, at around 75 amps and uh, we'll see how that works I'm gonna use uh, a pretty common and pretty um, diverse welding rod, the 6011, 60,000 pounds um, of, uh, of welding strength and 60,000 PSI. Um, the only rods I have on hand right now are 330 second rods, so I expect to have to, to go around it a couple of times. I'll probably make um, the primary pass and then I'll make a couple of other passes to reinforce. And um, I'm just gonna play on the bucket for a minute or two to get my amperage um, dialed in properly so I know what works best on this steel here. Well, that seems to work pretty well. I've told you this before and I'll tell you again, I'm no pro welder, but that's definitely going to solve my problem for me. All right, guys, so I'm just filming on my phone right now. I didn't bring a tripod and I didn't bring um, another camera. So this is the before picture. I'll weld up a little bit of it and then I will take a uh, midway picture and we'll show you the finished product. All right, so I'm halfway around and I've done a couple of passes and it's burning in pretty deep. Um, you guys know me well enough by now. I still feel like I should apologize for my bad welding. I don't want to um, pretend that I'm like teaching you guys how to weld because I am not. In fact, many of you are probably like way, way better welders. And um, I'm sure with enough practice and enough uh, desire, I could become a pretty good one too. I don't really care enough. I want it to work, I want it to hold, and I want it to uh, be functional. And uh, that's that. But we're halfway around a couple times. I'm gonna to try to try my best to get in there underneath in the bottom there. But I don't really don't even think I need to. We'll take a look and see what happens. Well, I finished welding up that bolt onto the track chain and I decided not to cut the excess bolt off. Um, no need to be hasty. It's not pr not protruding out at all. And it's not getting in the way of anything. And I hate to cut a $110 bolt um, until I'm absolutely sure that I need to. Can you believe 110 bucks for a bolt? It was an inch and a half in diameter by maybe, I think about a foot long. I think weighed as much as a dumbbell. It was crazy. But um, I just want to reassure you guys, you're not missing anything. The projects that I left off with in the last videos are still underway. I just had to take a break to um, do some spring cleanup things around my house and around my office building. I needed to clean up that pile of demolition debris from knocking the camper off of the trailer frame that's going to become 
the sawmill trailer, which incidentally is right there. <laughs> but um, apart from that, lots of new content in the queue. Summer is here. We're excited. The weather is doing wonders for our morale and getting us out and doing lots of cool stuff. Uh, what else? What else? What else? I can't believe we have 1,200 subscribers. It's absolutely incredible. We never thought it would turn into this. Um, this was just a hobby channel. We decided to put a few videos up here and there. And look what's happened. Praise God. Um, you know, we're not trying to get subscribers, which is the cool thing. This is not a competition to try to get a bunch of subscribers. But it's really neat that people are taking an interest in some of the things that we're up to. And I'll tell you what, in the next couple of months, it's going to get really, really interesting. There's a lot of fresh projects that um, haven't even been started yet, but are really, really going to be cool. Um, what else? I think that's about it for now. If you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel, we'd appreciate it if you did. Um, right after I said I'm not trying to get subscribers, I might as well catch your attention and say, hey, we'd love to have you on board for the adventure, so hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video, and tell your friends. Post this video on your Facebook, on your Google+, and your other social media. Tweet it. Um, do whatever you do. And we, we appreciate the support and the encouragement that we've gotten from you guys. And we will look forward to seeing you on the next video. So until then, hopefully it won't be too long.